A big part of what we're interested in is how learning can enable robots to uh, act intelligently in very complex and unstructured environments. Robots are really good at essentially doing the same thing over and over again. This is basically how robotics has been for several decades. When it comes to robots going out into unstructured environments like your home or an office or a hospital, there all sorts of unpredictable things might happen. And I think that learning will be a crucial component for making that possible for robots. Because then robots can actually learn from their experience, acquire a kind of common sense, and use that to act intelligently when uh, things happen in the real world they didn't quite expect. So we might have a setting, for instance, where we've already collected a lot of data. Maybe the robot has picked up thousands of objects or it's pushed around thousands of objects, and it can use that to get started. But in order for this technology to really be very powerful, to really enable any, uh, intelligent behavior in any real-world environment, then we need the robot to be able to continuously improve from its own experience. What we can he see here is a visual model predictive control. The idea is that you have a robot interacting autonomously with the environment, collecting data by pushing around objects. And then you can train a video prediction model that can predict the future images based on an action sequence. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, select a point in the image and select a goal point where I want to have this object pushed. And now what, what is happening is that uh, our algorithm samples a large number of action sequences and then for every of those action sequences predicts where the pixel is ending up that I clicked on, as you can see on the right in the video. And yeah, now it applies the optimal action sequence uh, to the robot and successfully pushes the object to the goal. So that's, I think, where we really need to be headed, where the mode of supervision is such that the robot can acquire it autonomously without necessarily requiring human intervention for every single thing that it learns. So the goal of this research was to have a robot be able to learn from videos of humans doing tasks. And the, the way that we had it do that was it actually was using what's called meta-learning or learning to learn. So here's that demonstration. The demonstration looks good. Now let's give the, the apple to the robot and we can shuffle around the objects. And then the robot now needs to try to figure out, just from the video of the human, the video that I gave it, how to accomplish the task. So we can see here that it's figured out uh, that it needs to place into the blue bowl, and it's, uh, it's lowering the object into the bowl. So that's a mode of uh, demonstration, a way of specifying tasks for a robot that's much more intuitive, I think, for, uh, for normal people to do, people who are not robotics experts. We'd like to be doing things that are actually making a difference in the world, that, are, uh, that have commercial implications, but that also are helping make people's lives better. But in the long term, I think that looking at things that are actually relevant for real world problems serves as a very good signpost to make sure that you're studying the right scientific uh, question. Because uh, if we want to create uh, robotic systems that are capable, intelligent, that can reason about complex situations, we need to actually be pushing ourselves to get things into realistic settings. If we do everything kind of in, in video game worlds and in, in, in little simulator worlds, we might do a really great job of solving those simulator worlds, but not really make a big impact on real world intelligence.